is I'm going to tuck another flower in behind here. So I'm just going to follow the edge again, just to the point where it meets the um, these the flower and the leaf. Put that aside, and I'll just fill in the color on those ones. So again, that's the aureolin and a little bit of the rose or permanent rose. So again, I'm just continuing with the wet into dry technique. I'm going to pick up just the aureolin now, just the yellow. And again, just touching the edges of those surfaces and just some water. Okay, and one more back over here. I'm going to use just a stronger pigment. I'm going to pick up, uh, go into the dollop of um, permanent rose, rinse that out, and then go into the aureole. And so I've got quite a strong mixture and I'm going to put it in here. So where it's tucked in underneath the flower and then I'll go with the aureolin and let the two mingle together. All right, so I'll let that settle in. Actually, I'm just going to come up here just to finish up the leaves. I'm going to put in just green. I'm not even putting in any uh, blue this time. Just a bit of pigment here. And just rinsing out my brush. It's just water on my brush. And then I'll just finish off those little leaves there now. So that's done. We've got another one here. Same process. I'm going to do this quickly. And I'll leave that one. That one I'm going to leave. This one I'll put in and finish that. Okay. So. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, another leaf back in here. So that's the, um, again, it's the blue, the, it's the ultramarine, same colors that I'm using. I'm not introducing any new colors. That's dry, so I'm just going to put that in. Rinse out my brush. I'm going to get some more. I need to mix up a little bit more green, so I'm just dipping into the Antwerp and into the Hooker's Green and just dragging my brush again into the Burnt Sienna and the Aureolin. There's my nice green. Rinse my brush and into the Aureolin. Okay, so that leaf is done. I forgot to leave a center for the um, the little bud in the center of this flower here. So I'm going to just, with my finger and the tissue, I'm just going to just push hard onto the center and it should leave a little dry mark. Okay, next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to do a very dark section of the painting. The area that is it's called negative space, the area that is behind the main subject. So this one area that's dark in behind this flower. I'm going to create an interesting little area back in here by using some very dark pigment. So I am going to pick up uh, indigo and I'm going into, well actually you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to dry this off because it's quite wet. So I'm going to dry this off because I want a little bit less water in the mixture. So I'm going to pick up some indigo and a bit of the French ultramarine and pick up a bit of brown. It's the, um, uh, look how dark that is, it's beautiful. It's the um, burnt umber or a bit of sepia. If you've never used watercolors before, don't bother buying sepia. It's a very it's a tricky color to use. So I've got a very dark, dark mixture here. And then what I'm going to do is pick up some of the green and lay in some nice rich color here. I have a little line along here, so there's a stem going out. I'm just going to 
place it really close to this line here but not touching it. If this dark dark color touches that it's going to run right into it so I'm going to try and keep them separated if I can. And I'm going to just put a bit more green into that. Rinse my brush out and I'm going to take off most of the water and I'm going to go back into the permanent rose and the stronger color here maybe a bit more burnt sienna to make it a deep deep color look at how deep that is and maybe pick up a bit of the pink that I was using here that's sitting on my tray so I'm just going to drop that into that area and stop Rinse my brush out and pick up a bit of the areolan. Put that in here and back in here. And I can just leave a few of those little white spots, that's okay. So I'm just going to smooth out the lines that are here just with a dry brush. There's another leaf here that I won't touch. I won't do anything with it just yet. So that's a nice, nice rich area. And like I said, that's far in the distance. Okay, so next thing that I'll do, I'm going to work on putting in another couple of leaves in behind here. I see a pencil line that I don't like, so I'm just going to erase that. I have to let that dry. Okay, so the area that I'm going to tackle next is I'm going to put in a few more of these leaves, but a cluster of them, so they're all overlapping. And the way you do that, when you're painting these shapes, think about the shape of this leaf. You've had lots of practice doing it. So if I were to, for example, that's a leaf, leaf shape. Maybe I pick up a little bit more blue the next time. We're going to let these all run together. Do another one like that. Maybe green again. And just fill that space in behind. I'm going to do another leaf shape there. Maybe another one like that. Alright, and then stop. I'm going to do the same thing over in here. It's just a little area. So I'm just, well actually I'm just going to fill in with color. I'm going to take some of the green, then a little bit of the blue, and just something like that. Maybe I'll put one more in back here. Maybe I'll put one more back in here. Okay, without even drawing. So that's that. And the next thing that I'm going to do is start to fill in this area back here and here. I have to make sure that it's all dry. Actually, you know what? I'll change my mind. Since we've done dark here, I'm going to pick up some of the dark and create a dark area here. Not quite as dark as this, but I'm going to start creating some dark, um, putting some dark pigment in. I don't know if you can see this line or not. There's a dark line, or a pencil line here, and it's going to give the impression that we're looking over top of a vase. So this is going to become the vase. So what I'll do is I'll take the same color that I used as the background here, but I'll dilute it a bit. I'm going to make it more of a gray color. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the pink in there. All right, I've got some dirty water there. That's okay for this application, so. <clears throat> so I'm starting to put in, this is the um, the tabletop or the ground, depends on where you want to envision the, the pot sitting. And I'm just going to fill in this space following the shape of my container. You could use a plate to create that line or you can probably just freehand that. And I'm just going to create a shape here. Maybe it's another leaf. Maybe a couple of little circles here. The 
common thing for me to create little circle shapes in my work. So that creates, just fill that all in. Okay, so I'm going to pick up that same color again and carry on over here. Picking that color up, following the line of the container again. Notice the size of my brush is one of the larger ones. And my paint is really quite wet. You can see it just dripping, right? So this is what I want for this for this application. For this stage of the painting. And I'll just fill in a little bit in behind here. And then I'll start to fade that out a little bit. So it's just water on my brush. I'll come back in here just to finish off, maybe creating It's a good idea at this stage when you're working in the background to stand up and look at your work. And that's what I'm going to have to stop and do right now. We've kind of got to a point where it needs to dry a little bit. So I'll end this segment and hopefully this works out for you. That um, Actually, one more thing before I go is I'm just going to, very, very dry brush, I'm just going to soften the line here. Hopefully that... Maybe that's not a good idea because um, if you have too much water on your brush, you're going to end up with a lot of water pushing the pigment away. So I'll just say don't do what I just did. Just keep the line nice and firm and we can soften that later. All right. The other thing you can do if you're not sure about the lines here, you can take a tissue, roll it, and then just pull it through. That creates a nice soft effect there. Some of these colors, I'll tap off some of the pigment. All right, and back in on this one here, I'm just going to drop in a little bit of yellow and just let that settle down and, and dry before I continue. So we'll stop there and you carry on and try putting in the dark color here and putting in the background. But like I said, make sure that you draw a shape here. You could take a plate and, and that would help you create that, that line if you're not good at freehanding. So we'll stop there and I'll see you then in the next segment. Thanks.